Hello, and welcome to the White Noise Level 3 podcast. If you're having a bad day, think of my rescue corgi, Charlie. Mm. Uh, This is Tiwanaku, live from sunny South Florida. I hope all of you are ready for spring. One of my friends is actually changing the baseboards and slabbing on a new coat of paint. (laughs) Apparently it's three different colors of purple in her bedroom. So hopefully she'll inspire you to uh, spring clean as well. Maybe donate some old clothes. Well, this episode is long in coming because it's so near to my heart. Uh, How I found Charlie, my rescue corgi. Uh, Basically, it was a year ago in June, and although it feels like I've had him forever, my Shih Tzu princess uh, wanted a new boyfriend. She didn't tell me this, but I could tell that she was just antsy, and as much as I was with her and tried to play with her, I'm not a dog, and I could tell that that was what she needed. So I went to the shelter, and uh, the first time... Uh, It was just overwhelming just how many dogs were there. Uh, There were small dogs and they were separated by uh, the larger breeds. I was focused on the small dogs because of uh, the main worry that I had that the dog would not harm my Shih Tzu. So something smaller I thought would be safer as well. Uh, you're supposed to just jot down the numbers on the kennels of the dogs that you would like to play with and then go back to registration. Uh, But by the time I would do that, they were not available. They were all taken. So uh, then I went back a second time and the same thing kind of happened. But that night I uh, couldn't sleep because there was one particular dog that I remember out of, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands that had a sign on the cage and it said fearful and it was the only sign of that nature so I was just thinking there's this poor little small dog that's scared in this big shelter I need to you know go rescue him so the third time that I went I actually did (laughs) I got him it was love at first sight uh at least for me uh he prances when he walks so I really like the way how he walks Uh, we had this playtime with a shelter volunteer and it wasn't even five minutes I said yeah you know I'm gonna get him and it was also mainly just the fatigue of I've been here three times now Uh, I work I don't have a lot of time this is a dog and (laughs) it fits the bill hopefully my shih tzu will like him as a platonic boyfriend so um I I never noticed any kind of resistance from him to me ever as well. So I think it was mutual love at first sight. It turns out that he's maybe a year older. They think he might be a year older than my Shih Tzu. So similar in age. He was already neutered. uh, But I I think um, that day, I took him that day to uh, the vet. And uh, he did have an infection uh, in the... Uh, in that area. And he also had a very bad kennel cough and he was actually spitting up. And then he was also um, shedding quite profusely all over my car. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So $300 later, that's all taken care of. Um, That's all in the past. He still has what I call this anxiety cough, although the vet uh, assures me that there's nothing really wrong there. And I'm okay with that because I also have mild asthma and hay fever. So if you listen to the Methicoline Challenge podcast, then you'll learn all about that. Um, Yeah, so I saw this big change in my Shih Tzu. Uh, You know, after they got used to each other, then she started copying him because she never really had a dog as a role model. So he was happy to take that on. And instead of, you know, being mopey and depressed and just looking out the window, now she's a completely different dog and has a new spirit about her, which was really the main point. 
Uh, the thing about Charlie is that he has to be next to me. And I'm, I mean, really, he has to be next to me. So if I'm sitting down on the couch, then he has to put his paw or some kind of body part, you know, touching me. And then, uh, which which is just adorable. And then if I, I just have a small one bedroom. So if I just, you know, change where I'm sitting, which is not that far away, then he'll come over and then eventually the Shih Tzu has to be picked up to come over. And then the cat um, also comes over to see what's going on and not to be left out. So it's just the funniest thing. Um, and a lot of times um, he wants to be invited to sit next to me. So we know the drill. I just tap the, the couch, uh, you know, with my hand to let him know that he can come up. So he must have had some kind of... Um, previous training because I didn't train him <laughs> at all <laughs> to, um, to do anything like that. <laughs> so I, um, I'm so happy. I won a uh, lotto for choosing Charlie. He's a cardigan Welsh Corgi and they're very rare. Um, I mean, they're, it's just very rare to find, to find these puppies anywhere in the, in the world. <laughs> According to the Welsh, uh, they're, you know, an ancient her herding breed developed there, and corgi means dwarf dog. So if, you know, picture herding cattle, if the animal kicks the dog, then the dog is low enough to miss the kick. Um, but by now, he's a mama's boy. He's, com he's completely domesticated. Uh, I also canceled my security because he is an excellent guard dog and he barks at anything. Uh, he has excellent hearing, even things that I'm, I don't really know what, what he's doing. But I don't need a security system anymore. Uh, the other side of the coin there is that he does have leash aggression. So if you're the unfortunate person walking anywhere near us... <laughs> with your dog. It doesn't even matter the size of the dog. It could be a small chihuahua or, you know, a Rottweiler, God forbid. Uh, he will aggressively lunge and bark like a lunatic. Um, I have a special leash, those retractable leashes, and I make sure I hang on because uh, living in the, a populated urban area, I don't want him to to um, break away and possibly uh, run into danger and get hit by a car. But uh, the reason why I'm making this podcast is because of Charlie. I mean, I don't know what happened before I saw him, but I'm sure that he suffered a lot. Uh, the shelter thinks he was abused. Um, I picked him up and he was 15 pounds and now he's a nice, healthy 19 pounds. Um, he has his own schedule, so that means all of us have the schedule. So we all sleep together. He wakes me up to go walking and then breakfast, repeat for lunch, lunch and walking, and then dinner, the same thing. If I deviate even by five minutes, then he'll just start staring at me intently like are you forgetting something and then the funniest thing too is that he barks once so if he's surprised about something if I'm wearing a new outfit just something that startles him that he hasn't seen before he'll bark <laughs> he'll actually just bark once it's so funny <laughs> so the mission accomplished uh, succeeded Gisela and Charlie uh, the Shih Tzu and the Corgi they love each other their boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, if I take the corgi out for the walk because the shih tzu wants to continue sleeping in my bed, then he goes out for a short walk and then runs back and goes into the bedroom and checks on his girlfriend. It's just the cutest thing. I've also heard uh, that the Welsh, uh, back in ancient times, or maybe even now, they consider this dog a fairy dog. You know, something magical about about him. And, and I agree that that's true. So hopefully he's rubbed off some good luck for me. Um, when I walk when I walk him, I think about how lucky I am to have met him and vice versa. I hope that he likes his new home. And um, 
the Bee Gees song, Staying Alive, plays in my head because he really did have to stay alive. You know, he lived on the streets. My little baby lived on the streets and he escaped an abusive situation uh, until we found each other. So no matter what your problems are, think of Charlie, my rescue corgi, and everything that he went through so that we could be together. Well, thank you for listening for all of my um, international uh, listeners as well. Hello, Australia, Poland, India, Germany. I know you're listening (laughs) from the web statistics. And um, definitely want to hear your feedback if you have a similar story. Uh, Please drop me a note at whitenoiselevel3.wordpress.com. All right, we'll chat soon. And think of Charlie, the Staying Alive Bee Gees song. Bye-bye.